Hey guys, and welcome back to Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. The Juggernaut has officially been stopped, we've trademarked that shit, so now it's time to move on to the final Spider-Man Noir level, and we can finally finish his arc and take down the Goblin. Man, uh, the Juggernaut has officially been stopped, that is a t-shirt line, if ever I heard one. <laughs> well, if we were more like meme lords, we'd properly cash in on that shit, but alas, we are Hellfire comms. Uh, you just said we trademarked it. What did we trademark it for? <laughs> Point well taken, mate. I actually really, really like this level. Like, you've got the whole unique aspect with the carnival, and those fireworks aren't just for show. They will light up the areas and prevent you from stealthing efficiently, so you've got to be kind of, like, crafty in this particular level. And then it's got the fun house aspect, and you know what? I'm kind of giving too much away, so let's just watch it play out. Well, areas like this can be really frickin' creepy. Or maybe that's just the subconscious effect of having read The Killing Joke first. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think it's part of the reason why the Joker, in general, is such an effective villain. It's because he plays on the whole, everyone's kinda scared of clowns. <laughs> the ultimate bolt goes bad. Spots before my eyes. Now, he was already kind of goblin-esque, was Noir Goblin, because he was, like, he had a sort of, like, skin condition which made him more scaly, and he wound up in, like, a freak show, and blah, 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 my childhood and that shit, and he turned to evil. But uh, I guess the fragment turns him into a proper goblin, because, you know, you got to have escalation. It, would I be wrong in saying that, um, that Spider-Man Noir takes a slightly Nolan-like approach toward its villains? How so? In the sense that they're that they have a more realistic and grounded um, concept, as opposed to flying around on flying wing things and shooting and throwing bomb pumpkins at everything. I guess so, yeah. But then again, you have to take the time frame into account. But then again, if you read Spider Verse, there is that one female Spider Woman, well, kind of redundant, I guess. That one Spider Woman who's like steampunk and shit. I think I know the one you're talking about. The only one I remember was the, uh, the, 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 the you know, the deliberate Ava, you know, reference kind oh, of spider. Yeah. <laughs> or the, that, I, that one's hard to explain, admittedly. Okay, hang on. What is Spider-Man walking on? He's walking on some string and some flags. Some string and some flags, and those that string and flags is not reacting to his weight at all? Dude, it's a video game! Yeah, except at this point, it usually would in any other game. D just admire the rough and shut up. There it is. Drink it in, <laughs> baby. This is Spider-Man 1602. A former apprentice to Royal Spymaster Sir Nicholas Fury, Peter... Oh, this is hard to pronounce. Parkour? Or Parkag? Parkour? Really? It's spelled P-A-R-Q... U A G H. Peter, whatever, may be the earliest Spider Man in any dimension's timeline. Thanks to a bite from, myst from a mystical spider, enhanced strength and agility combined with web shooting abilities, presenting a huge threat to the evils of Master Osborne. He'll happily jump in to relieve Spider Man Noir, both to save his own dimension and marvel at the wonders of the future. His first appearance, uh, the character that is, uh, originated in Marvel 1602 issue 1 in 2003, although he didn't wear this particular costume, although, and the costume you see here in Shy Dims originated in Spider Man 1602 issue 1, which came out in 2009, although it was a cover only kind of thing. Boy, this is confusing lore! So, yes, all of those Assassin's Creed remarks we were making last time actually match now. <laughs> uh, look at the frilly neck thing he's got going. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he's wear, wearing that rough with reckless abandon. Um, yeah, so, Tom, I think it's meant to be pronounced Peter Parker. Okay. So, basically, like, Peter Parker, but they, they decided to try and make it look all fancy and ancient and ah. instead made it look like it's very complicated to pronounce. I want them to do, like, a, an alternate timeline or universe Spider-Man called Peter Parkour, and he just does parkour brilliant. all the time. <laughs> it's like a Jet Set Radio kind of Peter Parker. Yeah. Wouldn't that be, like, the Spider-Man cameo in Tony Hawk 2? I guess. I guess. <laughs> We got like a big wide open area full of guys uh, here to take down and uh, a few hostages to rescue. This isn't the sole stealthing bit, although I think the next one is like a little bit more compact, but I would say this is my favorite part of the level in general. 
So is this the bit with the fireworks kind of lighting up the area? Oh yeah, you can't really see it that well because I always have like spider vision on or, you know, detective mode just so I can see where the guys are. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense to do that really. Oh, I hope he doesn't hear this. Bang! Web, <laughs> web. <laughs> Must be the fireworks. Oh no! Not fireworks! That was also fireworks that sound like punches. Special order. What's cool though is when you have detective mode on, I guess the fireworks act as kind of like a flashbang, so it kind of makes even your supervision mode a little bit harder to work with. I like it when games do do stuff like that, little little uh, sections that don't let you use your incredibly convenient sight or radar powers. I think Metal Gear Solid had its own little segments like that, and uh, jamming grenades and whatnot. Oh yeah, a lot like the solid on radar and such. Yeah, and you got so used to using that shit too that when it did happen, it was really tense. Those are often like the best parts of video games, where you, you practice with a move or like a technique for the whole game, and then it suddenly says, survive without it. Most often, this will be a stealth section, since you've been using weapons throughout the entire game. Alright, how many guys are there here? Uh, I, I... <laughs> You're Spider-Man the War, mate. You should be keeping a tally. <laughs> well... I think um, Spider-Man's sense can only see a certain amount of distance at a given time. Oh, yeah, that's true. So. I'm not sure. Uh, because I know in um, the Arkham games, uh -huh. you, can, you can see all the enemies in a given stealth section from any distance. Usually because the stealth sections aren't that large. So... Yes, the employee of the carnival who decided to come in her formal evening wear. Makes sense. Uh, if you're going to be kidnapped, you can look fabulous. Well, you know, if you're an employee, you're probably dressing formal as well, so... Yeah. That is true. I mean, especially back then. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm wearing a fucking roof, for God's sake. Can I take your order? <laughs> Like, it, it was, like, maybe a generation or two ago where, like, even going on a date in vaguely casual clothes was basically unheard of. So, eh. You can't just leave me here. You can't! Well, I mean, like, in these days we're, we're, we're all, like, um... Uh, oh man, that's pretentious. You, you, you're, not, you're not gonna... You, you're just putting on your best face. Nobody does that anymore, but... Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to have a best face if uh, all your faces combine to be a worst one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Don't worry, this section is almost over. Thank God. <laughs> that was an entirely useless tangent, but... <laughs> well, Larissa, I'm not unfamiliar with your tangents on Brain Scratch, so it's fine. Well, if need to be, I've got the um, perfect thing to use for a bit of a tangent should the need arise. Oh, I, I, hold oh. on to that. Hold on to that. I feel we may need it later on. <laughs> <laughs> that is, unfortunately, the problem with stealth-based games is that they take a really long time to get through the sections. And also, you know, I'm just trying to do my best here because uh, I had... I think I mentioned this in, like, Act 2 at some point. I had a bit of a hard time recording this because my OCD kept kicking in whenever I would, like take a flurry of punches or kicks and it would just like it would force me to redo stuff over and over but as a consequence of that I got pretty good at the stealth sections which is a bonus mm yeah well practice makes perfect <laughs> granted these aren't the hardest stealth sections in any video game I've ever played I think the ones with Beyond Grand Evil may actually be harder yeah well the first time anyway once you know what you're doing you just do the same thing I want somebody to try and stealth in real life based on what they've learned here. You know, they'll make, like, every shit fall over and beat the hell out of the other guys. I thought it was the fireworks. Yeah. Oh, no, they're falling. They took out all the guys somehow. Also, I think Mega64 did a few of those, like, oh, what if video games were real kind of things at one point or another. I do like how you are t also taking the time to find all the gold skull tubs in this level, which will be really useful later. Yeah, yeah, we can get a bigger wallet and everything, and that will really help to take down the goblin. I'll just buy up all his businesses, and then he's really fucked. Oh god, I wasn't saying nothing, Mr. Goblin. The goblin and all his glory. Oh man, that 
that thing going on with his mouth. That always creeps me out when um when something has like a sewed mouth look to it or flesh stretched over part of their mouth. Yeah, I think one of my um phobias when it comes to like cartoons, animation, etc., is when a character's face gets like damaged or completely ripped off. So you can imagine how fun watching the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy was. <laughs> oh man, he must have also struggled greatly with like um the Dark Knight and. Also, I mean, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, and all of that. Yes, that is Jim Cummings as Goblin, by the way. I was fixing to say, because I was trying to listen to it, and I could almost tell, because again, I've heard Jim Cummings so much, I could pick him out. You know, like a needle in a haystack? Something like that. Yeah, he was also, uh, I think it was Robotnik in Siam. Yeah, again, he's everyone, practically. <laughs> Sniffly, what kind of... No, I'm not going to go down there. This point fucked me over more than once because, dear viewer, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions is a fun game for the most part, but it is also very technically buggy. And one of the areas that is most buggy is the doorway into this little tent here. When I went through it, it nothing triggered. I tried to walk out the back door, I fell through the level. And I have pictographic evidence of this on fucking Twitter. <laughs> oh dear. Oops. Uh, Richie, this is just a punchy punchy fighty whitey kind of section, so I guess we're gonna need that tangent. Okay, so did you guys know that in 2011 uh, there was a musical about Spider Man, Spider Man Turn Off the Dark? I think everybody knows about that one by now, Richie. <laughs> yeah, um, but like, have any of you guys actually kind of watched it online at all? Is it available to watch online? It's available illegally on YouTube. Um, well, if it's on YouTube, it's not illegal, is it? Well, no, no, you would think that, but that has not stopped people before. True, true. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, it's one of those... I think it's really infamous now, because it had so many problems on its road to production. Like, I think they started... It just took ages. I think it had the longest preview period of any show in history. So that's 182 performances. Wow. It's also kind of, I think, one of the most expensive shows ever made because it took so long to kind of make. And they had technical difficulties in several actors being injured because of all the kind of web swinging about. And at the end of the day, it's just a bit of a naff musical, really. So I'm like, not trying to laugh at the thought of someone being injured. It's just the thought of someone being injured imitating fucking Spider-Man on stage. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> You have to remember, though, uh, uh, with Spider-Man Turn Out in the Dark, uh, it was actually you know, brought together originally by uh, that same lady who worked on the Lion King musical, Julie Kramer, I think her name is. I'm probably saying that Table. wrong. Yeah. And the thing is, is like she had this really weird initial idea, like, oh, it ties into like Greek myth and Arachne's fucking in it. There's a Greek chorus called the Geek Chorus. And I'm sitting there, I'm reading this, and I'm like, this is fucking stupid. And then they revise it to be a more generic, oh, here's the Green Goblin doing stuff. And it was better from what I've seen, but again, it, it's honestly kind of forgettable at the end of the day from what I've seen uh, of Turn Off the Dark. Very appropriate that we were discussing a thing called Turn Off the Dark in a level where fireworks literally turn off the dark. <laughs> I mean, it's also fitting because of Goblin here. Because the primary villain of Spider Man Turn Off the Dark is the Green Goblin. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, you, you think for, like, a musical with music done by, like, Bono of U2 and The Edge, it would be kind of memorable. Like, there is nothing in that musical that is memorable other than, like, the set pieces. What, does it even have, like, the main Spider-Man theme? You know, Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can, and so on. I think they reference it at, at least one point. They better but fucking reference that. it at least once. It's fucking Spider-Man! <laughs> I know. It's it's ridiculous. But, yeah, it, it did... It, it's got... Had, well, had very, very mixed reviews when it was on, and then it concluded in 2014. Okay, cool. Is apparently going on tour at some point, but I don't think it's going to do hugely well, considering it is just such a bland show. Oh man, I'm going to rush out and buy tickets for that bad boy. I think I, I, I might want to watch it just for the sake of seeing a Spider-Man musical, because that seems almost as bad an idea as a Dragon Ball um, live-action movie. 
Or a Superman musical. Oof, yeah. Although, the, the positive thing of like any new bit of media in a franchise being made is, it's available for a later like multiversal crossover. <laughs> I guess. But would you really want to derive inspiration from fucking Dragon Ball Evolution? I was talking about Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. No, no, you see, you see if, 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 if in a Spider-Verse... We had a chance to see musical Spider-Man, Peter Porker, the amazing Spider-Man, and Spider-Gwen all in the same place. I would buy that comic in a heartbeat. To be honest, I think I would probably be there as well. (laughs) Well, Richard, you do love your musicals, but we're getting a little bit off track here. The main gimmick of this area is that um, they've caged all, like, you know, the employees of the carnival, you know, just like in the first area, but... Certain bits of this area are electrified, so you need to actually free the workers so they can activate or deactivate the uh, the electric wires and cages and so on. In, so in a way, it's kind of like a combination of noir and um, you know the electro level from earlier on. That's quite clever. Also, I'd be remiss in not mentioning the fact that there's like cameos uh, throughout this level. You may have noticed them on posters while we were talking about other completely unrelated things. You know, there's like a subtle shout out to the lizard. There's like a fantastic man who can like stretch and so on, obviously. Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four. There's like a bearded lady, not really sure who that's a reference to. It's probably just like a noir. Sue Storm? Really, Hell Dragon? <laughs> really? I don't know, that's just what they say online. Uh, well, you know, Noir is a, a very bleak kind of universe, so... Time to crash. Really? You're still going with the fireworks? It didn't work the first time, why would it work this time? Well, if you had been a little bit more to the right, you probably would have got spotted by that guy over there when the, when the, when the fireworks went off, so... Mm. Although I look... Comp- Completely different to how Spider-Man Noir usually looks. So, the, unless I'm like crawling on a wall at at the time, they could probably just mistake me for someone from like the Freak Show. Oh, he's wearing a rough. He's completely like anachronistic or whatever the fuck you pronounce it. Anachronistic. Thank you, English major. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just creepy. I'm just gonna leave you there, mate. It's fine. He'll suffocate and die eventually. Okay, kind of considering revising you from 2099 to Noir. Did you see Osborne? But no, it still belongs to Lewis. Although I'm kind of interested to see what you guys think of uh, the very nerdy, geeky slash dorky, uh, you know, appraisals that I've done of each commentator. Are we correctly appraised, or do you think we're other Spider Men? I swear to God, if you give me a shit one, I will bat you so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I sort of snuck into another commentary channel for this one, so being the stealth character seems to make sense. You were invited. That doesn't matter. I came in through the window. <laughs> it's like, I wonder why there was a lot of air in the background of your audio. Huh. We're almost done with this one now. Oh dear, I only just got that joke. <laughs> Come on, Richie. You're meant to be the scientist, man. Scientist one, not the funny one. Okay. And that is why I'm supposed to be Spider-Man 2099. I think out of all of us, I'm probably the most superior of Spider-Man, let's be honest. Okay. I sort of got the arrogance of Otto Octavius down. I think I mentioned way back in, like, part two that I was going to talk about superior Spider-Man. Spider-Man, I guess I'll do that now. Um, Idea seemed stupid at first, but I kind of enjoyed how it uh, got pulled off in the end. Although the ending is very much, you know, like, you know, Peter, we really are the superior Spider-Man out on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. I've heard a lot of complaints about the story in that, like, the main idea was good, like, and, like, uh, you know, having Otto try and sort of do things his own way but fail in other ways, like, that was a good idea, but mainly I I heard complaints about Dan Slott's tactics in terms of progressing the story to really kind of seem uh, uh, to try and rile people up in order to sell more issues. Like, I understand why people didn't like that, and I'm certainly against that myself. It's like the equivalent of clickbait in your comics. But at the same time, uh, it apparently did well enough that they are... I don't know if they have considered it, but having Superior Spider-Man be a separate universe, and maybe they return to him later, where, you know, Otto is still in control, and he's still doing the Superior Spider-Man thing, which I think is a good compromise, you know, considering that way you can have the best of both worlds. Okay, another gimmick kind of section here. The way you find 
well, the way out, is you look for the skull with the eyeballs that are going faster than the others. Huh. Okay. And you're being timed. Sorry. So I didn't realize sleep gas was seeping into the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting kind of like bully vibes here, you know, bully the video game. Oh, it's like for one second I was think I was thinking, what is this hallucinogenic or something? But then I realized, oh, it's a roller coaster. Yeah. With a twisty sort of house built around it. Hmm, that's pretty nice. Looks like a Mario Kart level. <laughs> Looks like a Mario Kart level crossed with that kind of spooky house in the Scooby Doo movie. <laughs> Uh, you were half right, Lois. That wasn't hallucinogenic gas, but this is. It's going to make fighting a wee bit harder. We have come to another forced noir fight section, and uh, this one's kind of annoying. Whoa, what's going on, man? I'm Spider-Man! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the world through the eyes of Mario. Oh, this does not look pleasant to play. No, no, it's just a bunch of wavy shit all over the screen. Yeah, ow, uh, ow, 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 oh, oh god. No, no, I, I'm not even kidding. My eyes just started hurting out of nowhere because I've been staring at the screen too intently. Oh, don't forget, don't, you know, feel that you need to stare at it intently all the time. Just remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and then when it's done, come back, <laughs> and then you can continue to commentate properly. Hey, look, it's the uh, frame rate for the PAL version of Shattered Dimension. <laughs> You're so fucking funny, Hell Dragon. <laughs> Kiss my ass. <laughs> Wait, hang on. This is a PlayStation 3 game. Didn't they, you know, Don't move past the 50 hertz the stuff joke. by then? Ugh, <laughs> oh, Lewis. Thank you for counteracting Hell Dragon's really corny jokes. I need you here for, like, most of the playthroughs <laughs> we do, That joke honestly. is amazing. Shut up. Okay, fair enough. Oh, you know, the, it's all this feeling when you're dancing on the ceiling. Man, this is painful to look at. Uh, well, I'm sorry, okay, I tried my best, but Clancy Brown can take a licking and keep on kicking. Super Clancy Brown. I I'm physically getting a headache watching this. That's okay, just wait for the QTE and then it'll all be over. Oh, it's like, game designers, don't go overboard with your visual effects. What were they thinking? I suddenly want to buy a hammer now. Keep telling you, Osborne, you got oh yeah, and the moment all the white disappears from the from from the screen, it's like my eyes are suddenly a lot less strained. I, I will admit I was kind of getting a wee bit queasy there, but maybe it's all the Christmas food I've had recently. <laughs> well, no, I, I think if anything, it's the fact of that was a horrendous visual effect, and they should have never done that at all in any way, shape, or form, because that is only going to make people ill. Deja vu. What am I going around in circles? Will this ever end? Okay, dude, you don't have to talk in your Batman voice. Does he use that when he's, like, doing other normal tasks? All right, dishes have been handled. Clink, put him back. Clink, clink. Uh, justice has been done. I'm just thinking of Frogerid's Two Worlds review now. <laughs> Wet. Cold. Aroused. I don't think we watch Progerard. Progerard the finishes. That's all I know him from. There's that one Komodo line again. Although, you know what? Considering we had to go through these eyeball puzzle things to get to that horrendous visual effect, it makes sense that we'd have a headache, because that would hurt. I've noticed you take damage when you go through, even if you go through, like, the right one. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't like force damage in video games. Well, unless the game immediately heals you of the same amount of damage. Yeah. Because then it... who the fuck cares? He's got a bit of a, a back problem there, buddy. <laughs> Can you say obvious fuck me light? Now, I swear to god I was pressing this correctly, but for whatever reason it would just not register. Because these things aren't hard to do, so, you know... yeah. Yeah, it's like, if, if you had only screwed up once, I would have assumed that, you know, it was just a mistake. But since you got it twice, that, that like, you don't mess up that kind of simple thing twice unless something's gone wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my reflexes are bad, they're not that bad. 
Oh, this particular set piece is a wee bit nasty, so get ready for a fade out and a fade back in. Well, to be honest, I don't really care if it's a nasty set piece. Visually, I'm very happy because I see the full moon there and I'm just like, ah. Noir really is aesthetically pleasing overall, but that's Noir in general. I guess we have one more civilian to save, and you've got to do it really fucking fast. You've literally just got to bolt down there and know exactly what you're doing. The first time, you got to grab him, and then the scene automatically ends. Failed that about two or three times because I could just not do it fast enough. Save Professor Layton, fast! <laughs> wow. I, I want to see a Noir Layton verse. That's pretty great. Uh, but you know, that whole rolling merry-go-round thing just gave me flashbacks to DMC. Oh, here we go with the sob story. Boo-hoo, I was in a freak show. Dude, that sounds fucking awesome. Free rent and board. Ah, uh, not exactly, no. If that's your logic, okay, then go be that person who saves other people. Don't flail around like a child. Well, look at him. Ah! Okay, let's get a little bit of a strategy going here. Basically, he's got this big old pimple on his back. You want to, like, web strike or zip or whatever towards him, flip over, and then hit that big old pimple. Job's a good one. Uh, so, Lewis, how did you fare against the Goblin, mate? Um, uh, I don't think I actually beat the game, um, or this level. I, I remember the fireworks, because uh, I definitely played this level. I remember... Oh. I, liking the fireworks and the uh, the creepy atmosphere. Yeah. But I, I like. I also distinctly remember this video being the first time I saw the twisty hallway roller coaster area. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I beat the goblin. Oh, that's a shame. I am loving the massive radioactive tumor on his back, though. <laughs> like I said, it's a fuck me light. <laughs> Well, every boss has got to have a shockwave. I don't care if you're using the fragment, it's not fair, alright? When does Edtom get a shockwave? Well, you know, it's, at least it's not a, a 360 degree shockwave. It's more like a wave that goes out in one direction. That kind of thing I kind of like, but... Man, one direction is even worse than shockwaves. God, uh... this is just terrible. <laughs> and Tom, you know how you were asking when you get a shockwave? Uh-huh. Um, it'll be if you can find Lancaster Sneed. Sorry? Um, there is an actual Marvel hero called Shockwave. Okay. And his kind of alias is Lancaster Sneed. Actually born in Newcastle, apparently. Uh, okay, well I was like, giving it all this with the proper commentary, you were trying to get lore for a joke. Okay, plus one to you, my scientist friend. <laughs> Alright, now we actually get a little bit of fucking stealth. You know, for the stealth man the stealth Spider-Man, Spider-Man the War. The big guy. I really like it when stealth is implemented into a boss fight. Some of the best boss fights in these games show up in the in those areas, like Mr. Freeze from Arkham City. That was a really good one. Right, now he's just going to be like, I'm just going to hit you with like this massive column here. So you're going to want to like dodge out of the way and... Uh, just repeat the process, basically. Uh, like, I know nobody in this call is going to get this, but... <laughs> I just watched Ballista Bat on uh, Pro Jared's D&D December, like, yesterday. And, and all I'm seeing is the character he described in that video here. <laughs> the guy who drank uh, a fire giant potion, caught a Ballista Bolt that was fired at his party, and then just ran into a dwarven army swinging with it. <laughs> And completely skipped over half the adventure because of it. <laughs> that is adorable. I have no idea what you're talking about, but uh, I do enjoy a bit of Counter Monkey from time to time. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know, D&D's always had a little bit of appeal for me. Too much, like, work to get into it, though. I'm just that lazy. Oh, yeah, I understand. Oh, that, that's why they have the shorter starter box, so that you don't have to start with the fucking gigantic uh, core rule books like Jesus Christ. I wish he could make the column glow as well. Oh, okay, just gets rid of it. Wow, you were right, he really is a tantrum thrown man child goblin. He really does need to learn his lessons from the Hulk, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm going to use that phrase to describe Kylo Ren from now on. <laughs> tantrum throwing man. <laughs> column throwing goblin. Uh, I've already forgotten the exact thing. I mean, it's, it's an apt description of Kylo Ren, to be honest. 
Yeah, I haven't seen it and I don't particularly care to, in all honesty. You know, I understand the concept of not being able to turn all the lights on at once and only having spotlights, but maybe keep spotlights focused on places where, you know, he's obviously going to jump to, not just places he might jump to, you know? Just cover all your bases. Alright, time for the final part of the fight, and, uh, just one person to fight? That's not enough. Mooks, get in here. And I want you guys to say nothing and just watch how this boss fight ends. See? Everything's going fine so far. Goblin, he's just gonna like stomp about, run about. You still watching? Good, because this is where the interesting part comes in. Uh... What? What happens? He pushed into the downed column, and for whatever reason, pushing that did damage to him, and he basically killed himself. What? Okay. <laughs> the first time this happened, he died so fast I could not pinpoint what happened, so I thought you had to use the cannon. Like, one of the mooks would periodically fire the cannon, and you had to get him in the way of it. No, he just killed himself. Oh, jeez. That's awesome. Yeah, you better get a gold for that feat. That was pretty awesome. Okay, guys, that will do it for the final Noir level. Like with Amazing, he will be back for the finale. But for now, we'll see you next time for the final 2099 level. Bye for now.